What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is December 1st of 2022. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, I wanna spend some time to talk about what can only be called a Bitcoin trap. What I feel is a short-term wave of optimism that we have seen time and time again during this bear market and is yet again gonna leave a lot of investors losing a lot of money. It has to do with deviating away from the understanding of the fundamentals that need to play out in order to form a proper bear market. We're gonna talk about it as we go throughout today's video because I think that's the focus point we're all really interested in. If you like this video, drop a like and let's go ahead and kick off the rambling. So first off, I just wanna scan through the charts here. Bitcoin is up a respective about you know, six, seven percent over the last couple of days. Ethereum has really started to lead the way here over the last two days, up about 11 percent in total. And if we really start to step outside of crypto, which I think is very important, we need to look at the macro perspective of liquidity flows. Are basically investors buying up equities? That's a big question. And if we take a look at the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones, the SP 500, we see exactly that. From the lows that we had, roughly speaking, around October 13th on all the major indices. The S&P 500 is up 16.6%. The Dow Jones leading the way here up a whopping 20.5% from those October lows. And the NASDAQ, while not as impressive as the other two indicators, is still up around 15%. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna look at this as with every single relief rally, and they're going to ask, Nick, isn't it time to go long? Isn't it time to accept that maybe back in October that was the bear market bottom, that the Fed really has a grip on inflation, the macro sentiment's getting better, and that we've got greener pastures ahead. Now, I'll be honest with you all, as much as the next person, I'm totally fine admitting if I missed out on something and catching the wave. Because for me, I wanna see the signs that a clear bear market is over and a bull market has taken its place. And if I see those signs, I'll absolutely take a hold of those bull horns and ride the wave and absolutely have my position set. But we need to understand and step back here because again, there's so much going on in our lives, so much information we deal with. And I have to say that the best thing I've learned over the past couple of years is when you can filter out that noise, when you can filter out the noise and focus on the signal. And the thing that is gonna drive markets more is not what happens with FTX, Genesis, and all this stuff going on in crypto. That's within our little micro world of crypto. And that's definitely going to have a generally negative effect on crypto over the next couple of years. But what really matters here is what's going on over with Papa Jerome Powell and at the Federal Reserve. Because essentially speaking, if inflation is not under control, it doesn't matter if you're looking at the defensive stocks like the Dow Jones, it doesn't matter if you're looking at the NASDAQ, or the S&P 500, or even Ethereum or Bitcoin, all of them are going to be hit by the generally negative equity or crypto outflows, sell pressure versus the lackluster buy side pressure. If there's more selling than buying, people taking advantage of relief rallies rather than buying the dip. Generally speaking, lower highs and lower lows over the longer term time frame, then we are going to see lower prices. We are going to continue seeing a bear market. It means the Fed has not reached its targets. And there are two things that the Fed has made very, very clear that it needs to see before it can start to ease monetary policy. And that is inflation and the unemployment report. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and talk about these two metrics here and how it all relates back to Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin and crypto have already got a lot of negative things going on here. What they need to save it as an asset class is and again, if it's still gonna be trading as a speculative asset like stocks or with that correlation, it needs to see the Federal Reserve ease monetary policy and show confidently that it has cooled that inflation. Let's go ahead and take a look at those two things though. So first off, we've got our measurements of inflation. You've got the CPI and the PCE. Now I understand a lot of you don't wanna look at the annualized figure and I think that's a very good first step. The annualized figure is a bit deceiving because it's the last 12 months into one single metric. And of course, it's gonna be elevated. It's still weighing in some of those really high inflation months. And that's why mainly since back in July, we've started to see a decline here. As we step out of some of those exacerbated months that came in in the later parts of 2021, where they were saying it was transitory, and on top of that as well, as inflation month over month has declined to some degree. I go ahead and be the first to admit it. Inflation has declined, and we likely, if the Fed stays on course, we've likely seen the top of inflation back in July. But, a lot of people think that the Fed is about to deviate from its current course, and that's what we need to focus on. Now, when we take a look at the month over month inflation, we're definitely down from some of those crazy months that we had during peak inflation. But 
I want you to go ahead and take a look at the current past two months. Now, for the CPI, we've had about 0.4% month over month increases for the last two months, right? So we're not seeing deflation. We're not seeing 0% month over month growth. We're still seeing some growth in inflation, well above the typical elevated norm that we have there in history. Now, 0.4%. Let's think about this here. On an annualized basis, that's going to bring us up to around 4.8% year-over-year -year increase. Now, the Fed's target, as it's made very clear is across the major metrics, like the CPI or the PCE, is 2%. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but that sounds more like twice, if not more than twice, of what the Fed's target generally is. Maybe they're not going for 2%, maybe they're gonna do 2.5%, right? But again, even if we're really leaning on that metric, which again, I wanna make something very clear here, the Federal Reserve not only needs to take it down to 2%, but keep it there for a long period of time. That's its target rate before it's gonna really ease monetary policy. And if we are keeping at this elevated month over month level around 0.4%, we don't get some 0% months or we start getting some deflationary months like we would even get way back in the day when the Fed wasn't tightening so aggressively, have we really reached our inflationary target? Think about it here for a moment. You don't have to agree 100% with me but stick with me on this. Let's take a look at the PCE, all right? PCE as well, showing the exact same signs. While inflation technically peaked in the sense of its annualized figures back around July and August, we can see that for the past two recorded months, in August and September, we had 0.3% here. Again, quite elevated metrics. And on an annualized basis, roughly around 3.6%. And that's on the PCE, which doesn't factor in as much on the cost of housing versus that of the CPI, where shelter costs make up a much larger portion because to be completely candid, it's a huge part of where people are spending money and it's a huge part of people's costs of living and where that inflation has been. So even if the Fed wants to play ball here and play a little bit easier on itself with its inflationary targets, still on an annualized basis, if we remain at these levels, we are still at a 3.6% annualized level. Now, I understand I've been tossing a lot of numbers. It might be kind of boring at the end of the day. I know inflation is not incredibly exciting, but guys, we gotta be able to dive through this kind of stuff to know whether or not the bottom is in. I'm not here and gonna provide fluff and say, oh, here's the next great altcoin, right? We gotta think about what the status of the market is right now. Now, we have got the PCE report coming out here today. It's gonna be coming out later on this afternoon. And the big thing that we need to focus on is what the market is expecting right now, because in October, the headline PCE index is not estimated to have risen 0.3% like we saw with the last two months, but it's expected to be 0.4%. Already higher and the highest level we have seen, again, going back to that monthly indicator, the highest level we've seen since back in June, right? Again, we're slowly ticking up here on that inflationary level. We are not coming down to the negative territory. Now, here's the key thing that we need to keep in mind. If we get a positive upset and we see 0.3%, maybe something around 0.2%, 0.25%, then maybe, just maybe, the Fed might be showing some real signs of confidence that it is taming inflation. But if we get a positive or a negative upset, if we get 0.5%, 0.6%, it's going to be very clear here that we're not going down, that the Fed has not done enough, that there is too much easing still going on in the economy. So that report today is going to play a big decisive factor. But I got to tell you, on the data we have right now, I know there's maybe some lag to inflation and the results of what the Fed is doing, but it certainly isn't showing in the data so far. The Fed has been doing what it's been doing for months now. It has been raising interest rates for months throughout the majority of 2022. And it's also been starting to reduce its balance sheet by about $100 to $60 billion in assets on a given monthly basis. And we still have stocks at practical, nearly practically at their highs for some of the safer indices. And you still have the Dow Jones, excuse me, the NASDAQ, all these indicators starting to bump up every single time, hoping that the Fed's just gonna save them, okay? So that's inflation. But let's go ahead and take a look at unemployment. Now, I'm not saying, I wanna make it very clear here, I do not wanna see unemployment go up, okay? That is not what I wanna see. But at the same time, as much as I don't want unemployment to go up, I mean, there is a strong general labor, mar labor market here. And this is what the Federal Reserve is also watching here. If there's a spike up, if we go to 4.55%, right? Typically the kind of spikes you see in more moderate bear markets, 
maybe up to six, seven, eight percent, and the Fed would start to step in. But we have not seen that yet. The labor market is strong. It's been mainly flat since back in February and March. So labor market isn't something that's going to convince the Fed to fall back on its tightening efforts. Inflation, at least in my opinion, everyone's going to have a different one on this, doesn't show any signs of stopping. So just like during general secular bull markets, when every time there's a dip and everyone's fearful about something, we buy the dip because we know the Fed's going to come in for the rescue. During a bear market, we got to be able to stomach the relief rallies that are going on and ask, have the fundamentals changed? That is the only question we need to ask ourselves right now. And I got to be honest with you all, it doesn't look like it's changing. When we take a look at the major commodities that drive forward inflation, we can see from the new Energy uh, Information Administration, EIA, Governmental Organization, showcase that in September, total oil demand was pegged at 20 million barrels a day, based on monthly data, up 530,000 barrels from the previous month in August at 19.9 million. This is the highest level we've seen since back in September 2019. Take a look as well. Another tweet here from Eric Nuttall came out and talked about the fact that the global reserves here for crude oil, even with China being in a bit of a shutdown here with the zero COVID policy, with supply chains not distributing out as much as they were before, still, even in this environment, crude reserves onshore and floating storage has continued to set in its lowest level in a long period of time. We have been a continued downtrend, a tightening of global crude reserves. And I think what we've been seeing here in the XLE ETF, which tracks the broader energy sector, is a clear sign of that. Oil, natural gas stocks, they know what's going on. Oil and natural gas stocks are still at record highs here for this bull market. Now, I think there's an obvious question here. Equities generally up across the board, We're starting to see some relief in the tech stocks, the risk on plays, and the defensive stocks, like oil and natural gas stocks, which might be the one anomaly here. They're also up to practical all-time highs. So who is wrong here? It can't be both. You can't have the technology stocks doing phenomenally well and, you know, again, being prepared to rally back to new all-time highs or much higher levels than where they're at. And oil and natural gas stocks continue to tick up. One of them is going to win out. You can't have crypto winning while oil and natural gas is winning. One is defensive, one is speculative, whether we like it or not. So I would heed some caution going into this next PCE report. While again, I'm happy to admit maybe I get it wrong. And again, we're going to continue to keep that in mind when we go into our next preceding updates and the way we view the market. But I got to be honest with you all, wait for that PCE report. Wait to see what comes out on it. Because if we get a negative upset, it is going to be the clear sign well in advance the Federal Reserve cannot stop its tightening efforts. And even if the Fed does, without reaching back to that 2% target, without signaling a signal to the market that it has got things under control, inflation is known to come roaring back. Market bottoms are showcased when we have consolidative periods and asset valuations, when we have very clear signs that stagflation in this case, with the inflation we've got, stagflation has played out and we've had a proper recession. And so far, while we might have stagflation, we have not seen a real recession just yet. Sometimes when you have excess good, you gotta have excess bad. And that's exactly what I think is playing out here. So you can buy the dip if you want, now you can dollar cost average. I think we're at a much better range for DCA than we were, say, back in August when things were starting to tick back up, when we cashed out of the market. But I got to tell you guys, I wouldn't be doing it aggressively. I'd be waiting for the big dip, the big capitulation. I've seen a couple bear markets in crypto and equities, and I know it looks different than this. It feels different. You'll know when it's there. It's at the moment when you can't stomach to buy crypto. You think, oh my God, the industry is over with. I've been through it in March 2020, been there in December 2018. I've been there as well in equity markets, 2016, 2018, 2020. We'll see though. 
Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed my rambling, drop a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.